Support for LAist comes from FX, presenting Reservation Dogs. From co-creators and executive producers Sterlin Harjo and Taika Waititi, Reservation Dogs follows four indigenous teenagers in rural Oklahoma. Learn more at fxnetworks.com slash fyc. I'm Jesse Thorne, host of Bullseye, inviting you to a live taping of my show with my pal, actor, and comedian Paul Shear. It's June 13th at the Crawford. Get your tickets now at laist.com slash events. Today on the L.A. Report. CARE Court's implementation in Los Angeles County is off to a slow start. Hear how L.A. County supervisors voted on a rent control motion affecting unincorporated areas. And the director of Sunday's L.A. Pride Parade explains why her job is important. The parade could be the one time out of the entire year that someone feels safe and accepted. Good morning. It's Wednesday, June 5th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from LAS 89.3. The new California program aimed at getting more people with serious mental illness into treatment is far behind what the state projected for Los Angeles County. Robert Garova reports. Care Court allows family members and others to petition a court to step in with a voluntary care plan for someone living with serious mental illness like schizophrenia. Since launching last December, L.A. County has received 8% of the roughly 1,900 petitions the state projected. Martin Jones leads the effort for the L.A. County Department of Mental Health. Although maybe folks would like to see larger numbers, I think we see change one life at a time. So far, three people have court-ordered care plans in place. I'm Robert Garova. A federal judge is demanding answers from Los Angeles officials. He wants them to detail how homeless service providers are spending millions in taxpayer dollars. City officials have been ordered to attend a hearing tomorrow in downtown L.A. Back in March, Mayor Karen Bass promised to disclose spending details within two weeks. Last week, she told L.A.'s Larry Mantle that she is still working to get details that would be easier for the public to understand. Los Angeles County supervisors have narrowly approved lower allowable rent hikes in unincorporated areas after hearing from several homeowners and corporate landlords opposed to the motion. They cited financial issues such as higher mortgage interest and insurance and maintenance costs. David Wagner reports. In unincorporated parts of the county, tenants in apartments built before 1995 currently are covered by a 4 percent rent cap. The board narrowly voted to lower that limit to 3 percent starting in January. Two of the five supervisors voted no, with Catherine Barger saying building housing would do more to solve the region's affordability crisis. Supporters argue renters need help now. The majority of tenants here spend more than 30 percent of their income on rent, considered unaffordable under federal guidelines. For LAist, I'm David Wagner. City and county governments are discussing budgets for the upcoming fiscal year, which begins in July. LAist Yusra Farzan has been looking at some of the budgets in Orange County. The county's budget of $9.5 billion will prioritize community services and public safety after the Board of Supervisors voted to give OC Sheriff deputies a pay raise last year. The City of Orange is battling a budget deficit of just over $19 million. They're exploring cutting services or raising costs. Huntington Beach is involved in litigation with the state of California, and for the second time in a row, the city attorney's budget will be increased. For LAist, I'm Yusra Farazan. To check on the numbers for your city, go to LAist.com. Coming up, you'll hear from the director of Sunday's LA Pride Parade. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, starring Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell, Anna Sawai, and Godzilla. Two siblings follow in their father's footsteps to uncover his involvement with Monarch, a secretive organization connected to Godzilla. TV Line says this series is incredible, and Empire roars that it's epic. Following this podcast, you can hear remarks by father and son acting duo Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell and executive producer Chris Black. More on Monarch Legacy of Monsters at fyc.appletvplus.com. 
Support for LAist comes from FX's Shogun. Set in Japan in the year 1600, Lord Yoshi Toronaga is fighting for his life as his enemies unite against him. When a mysterious European ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village, its English pilot, John Blackthorne, comes bearing secrets that could tip the balance of power. Starring Hiroyuki Sanada, Cosmo Jarvis, and Anna Sawai, Shogun is available for your Emmy consideration at fxnetworks.com fyc. Back now to the L.A. report. One of generative AI's most contentious issues is its effect on classroom learning. One aspect is its usefulness when it comes to teaching. USC education professor Stephen Aguilar says that the tool could make way for more in-depth instruction by helping teachers handle their workload. That's the promise where I think where we'll be able to get where a lot of the automated comments, the structures that are things that you pick out all the time, we can automate a lot of that, and that gives teachers the freedom to really explore their students' writing in a more in-depth way. Aguilar says AI can pick up on certain writing errors more consistently than a human can, allowing teachers to focus on the creative aspects of their students' writing while also verifying the decisions of AI in grading. The L.A. Pride Parade is happening this Sunday. It's Mariela Spilari's fourth year as parade director and producer. She keeps a friend's advice in mind as she crafts the march. The parade could be the one time out of the entire year that someone feels safe and accepted and happy. And that's a huge responsibility to carry. So we don't take that lightly. She'll be part of a small crew on Sunday managing the Hollywood Boulevard parade route. Highway 1 up in Big Sur is reopened for travelers just in time for the summer travel season. It was closed for months because of a landslide, but it's not all good news. Earth Sciences professor Gary Griggs from UC Santa Cruz says another slide is inevitable due to climate change and the cliff's structure. It's sort of an uncontrollable force of nature there that we're dealing with that I think people have agreed is worth saving, but we are never going to be able to completely fix that. So enjoy the drive while you can, but stay tuned for long-term solutions for Highway 1. A heat dome has settled over the Southland. That means higher than normal temperatures for this time of year. Inland valleys, mountains, and deserts will be in the high 90s and low 100s. Coastal areas will not be as hot. The heat is expected to be highest today through Friday, but you can look for high temperatures to last through the next 10 to 14 days. This afternoon, beaches will be in the 70s. The L.A. Basin and inland Orange County will be in the mid-70s to low 80s. Coastal valleys will be in the 80s to around 90 degrees. Riverside will be up in the 90s. Antelope Valley highs will be as hot as 106. Low desert cities will get up to 110. Thank you for listening to the L.A. Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. LAist's Executive Editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Monarch Legacy of Monsters, starring Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell, Anna Sawai, and Godzilla. Father and son acting duo Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell play older and younger versions of Lee Shaw, the founder of Monarch, a secretive organization connected to Godzilla. As actors and team players, Kurt and Wyatt have a lot in common. We've had a similar life. His game was hockey, mine was baseball. One point in our lives, it was how we were going to make our living. To apply that to our business, I don't know how to look at life other than as a, no. as a win, win lose ball, ball game. I think we're the type of people that like, we want to be impact players. And you want to help your club win every time you go out there. Whether that club's a movie set, a story you're telling, on the ice, on the baseball field. I think we realize that we are much more alike than we are different. <laughs> Here's executive producer Chris Black. I think it should be about this family. I think it should be about secrets. It should be about a pair of siblings discovering each other and discovering that their father could not be trusted and was not the man he said he was. 
that's what brings them together and sends them on a quest, if you will, to find out the truth about the family and their father. And it's that journey that takes you into the world of the monsters. For Kurt and Wyatt Russell, being so close helped them sort out how to both play the same character. We work together quite a bit. We work together well. What's been your most favorite part of the show? When I was working with you on trying to figure Lee Shaw out, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then taking it to the guys and saying, what do you think? Uh, who is this guy? What, where is he going to go? Where did he come from? And doing that, doing that with you, I've, I've actually never done that really with much with another actor, but I've never played the same, the same role. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. TV Line says Monarch Legacy of Monsters is incredible and Empire roars that it's epic. More on Monarch Legacy of Monsters at fyc.appletvplus.com.